Hello everybody, I'm gonna make you a Friday Eve video and uh, just gonna have some different topics for today's video. Uh, we're gonna be all over the board here, to, we're all over the board. Um, got to edge off a couple boards. Uh, we had sold these uh, last, what we call black oak. Uh, people argue about there's only red oak and white oak, but this, for us, we still call it black oak. You can actually probably sell this as red oak. It is nice and clear. And, uh, but it has a really bad smell to it. It don't have quite that red cast to it as the true Northern red oak does. Now this board here, when I edge it off, I'm gonna be at 15 inches. Uh, and you can see the board already, if you drew a straight line, it's just starting to get a little bit of cup to it. And we didn't edge it off on the last video because we were just running out of time. We loaded all that sawdust up. So we're gonna go and fire the edger up. I'm gonna show you a little bit more in depth how this edger works. Everybody's been really asking about that. So we'll edge these couple boards off. Um, we're gonna change the oil on the um, chop saw. We've got to do a little bit of work to the sawdust blower. Uh, I want to pull the air cleaner on the uh, 671 Detroit, the bus motor, and see what kind of shape the air cleaner's in. We're getting close to really getting ramped back up, getting back into summertime sawing, so we're going to start really pounding the equipment a little bit more, so now's the time to check everything. So uh, this edge right now, we're going to go ahead and edge these couple boards off, but I'm going to show you over here at the edger make sure you're still with me here and everybody says can you run a camera inside of here i really can't because they have this lid and they have a micro switch in here they really don't want you inside of here when this thing's running it, it just stuff's going to be flying out and where's this going to fly right at the operator so basically this saw here stays stationary and on the back side of this saw, or the front side of this saw, there's a movable fence, which is controlled with this handle here. So, if we had Wayne on this side, and what Wayne means, the bark edge is called Wayne. And a lot of people says, what do you mean when you say Wayne? Well, this is Wayne on this side. This is a square edge. Now, if you look at this little gizmo right here, this is a sight fence. So... When you bring it back down, you can see that's going to be good where it's at. If there was Wayne here, the cut would be made right there. But we're going to eventually put a couple lasers on here. We'll get into that in the future here. But for this board here, we're going to bring this fence all the way up so that this board will rest against it. And we're only going to be using one saw over here. Now this edger has an adjustable one saw through that crank there, and you can see right now it's set up, there'd be a four inch board coming off of there. I also ordered on this saw, there's a third saw collar. So we could put a third saw on here if we're gonna cut, just say we're gonna cut a bunch of two by sixes or two by fours, we could put that other saw. All it is is four bolts that hold it on. These are what they call strobe saws. They're literally two, they're two half saw blades. And I should try to pull one out and show you at some point, but it's buried in our little cabinet over there. So as you adjust the width, this saw will travel over to the right. So right now it's at its tightest, which is four inches. So we're going to go ahead and close this guard. We're going to go ahead and fire the edger up. And we'll edge off these. It's hard to work with one hand, by the way. We're going to go ahead and edge off these couple boards to finish this order. Customer's picking them up tomorrow. And Eddie says, could you edge them off for me while you're up there? I said, sure, I'll have them ready for you. So let's get her fired up. All right, what we're going to do here, I told you we're going to split this in half. So I'm going to go ahead and set this at seven and a half. We'll send this piece back.
I will double check our measurement. And yeah, seven and a half will still work. So let's send it through again. Let's get our next our next victim board. Now this board here, we're gonna edge both sides off. I'm gonna leave a little bit of weighing in here because uh, if I take it all the way down, we'll end up with just about nothing. So we're gonna open this fence up. We're gonna sight that as much as we can. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of that wing. And we're going to take a measurement. Looks like about 8 inches would be looking good. Take a little bit. Let's try that. Looks good. We'll stick them here in a minute. Here's another one we're going to split. Now this board here has a little bevel on it for making a stop sign. So we're going to get rid of that. And let's see what we're going to split it into. Roughly two nine inch boards. We'll send one through first. Check our measurement. Oh, about eight and a half.
All right. So, I'm going to try not to make too much of a mess, but it is what it is. Um, this is metric, so in order to get a um, oh, just say you wanted to get a valve made up. So what I always found is just basically take your take your funnel, get this plug off as quick as you can. You're going to make some mess, but that's just the way it is. And we'll just hold that against there. Got a little rag here. And that seems to work out fairly well. I was watching frickin' Jeep the other day and he's changing oil on that uh, new crazy looking lift he bought. And he's he had oil everywhere but where he wanted it. So that's why I just cut up them couple slabs to get a little bit of heat or else we'd be here for 20 minutes to get this oil to come out of here. Can't say enough good about these Harbor Freight, these uh, Predator engines. Uh, they really, really, it's basically a Honda if you, if you were to dissect it. And we change this uh, about twice a year. Because this one isn't, the blower's really getting pounded on. But yeah, you can see the oil's nice and caramel looking, so it's, uh, it's waiting to, it was waiting to be changed. But yeah, the funnel method works good. Because you can contain your spill. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and get this cleaned up here and add some oil to this. And the next thing we're going to attack the uh, air cleaner on the, on the old 671 old bus motor. All right, I went ahead and took the bolts out so you didn't have to be bored with that. Um, but we'll take a look at this. I should write the part number out here. Uh, okay, don't let the... Uh, you might look at that and say, wow, that looks really clean. It works from the inside out. So basically it's sucking air in through the top, pulling it out to the bus motor. So this got a little bit of, a little bit of crud in there. So we're gonna go ahead and order a new filter. And uh, for now, I'm just gonna clean it as best as I can. I don't think I'll get one before we saw again, but uh, that's just, yeah, the, these are the cone filters and they got a lot of surface area on them. So if I just get a little bit clean and if you're going to blow it out, make sure you're blowing it out from here in so that the dust is leaving the element, not driving it back in. So we'll go ahead and uh, just clean this up as best as we can, put it back together and that'll be it for cleaning this up, but we're going to put a new one on there. All right, we're going to grease up the bearings here. And I'm using a red and tacky glue. I've seen it coming out already, so that's good. You don't want to over grease a mandrel. There's, there's a lot of controversy on how often you should grease your actual mandrel. Um, we only do this a few times a year. Because you're, if you're putting really good grease in there, you see the presence of it. The way the way Edmonston does their mills is uh, this is the outboard bearing, which is towards the belts. Then they also have another zerk back in here, which they run a they run a hose back into the actual uh, bearing. So let's see if we can get a hold of it here. The only disadvantage, you really can't see it come out, but. I would say she got some grease. So that should be good for another 50,000 miles or so. And 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that uh, sawdust blower real quick. All right, with a little bit of magic, a camera here, I got the bolts out and it's been leaking mainly on this side. So what I got to do is get something to better seal these sides up. I don't know if I can wrap that with some, uh, some sort of packing. I don't want to really put adhesive like caulking in there because if you have to get it back apart, it will be very tough. But this is basically how this blower works. This, uh, this blade has fans in it and these fans spin around at the speed of light and literally blow that sawdust make a suction but look look at the look at the wear on these from hitting wet sawdust it's amazing um, how that actually works and then we'll go ahead and we'll grease these bearings up and that should take care of the sawdust leak but over time it has made a mess here. We got to finish putting some battens on the back wall here. Um, on the priority list, it's not all that high. This is probably three years of build up here. So I'm not all that worried about it. But uh, I did want to get this tore apart. And we'll take a walk around here while we're here. I'm gonna grab up my sawdust boot here. And We've been trying to get a lot of stuff done in the spring here. Eddie and I have been working on getting the back of the sawmill lot here cleaned up. We're going to start bringing some fill in here. And I burned up just about all that slab wood all winter long. And we're going to clean this mess up. We're going to put fill dirt in here, put some millings in here, and then start bringing all them slab wood boxes over and stacking them nice and neatly. We, we got a lot of, lot of ground over there that's not being used really to our advantage. So... We'll get these boxes relocated. Uh, lumber's been leaving here too. Uh, sales have been picking up, and that's a good thing when you own a sawmill. So at least we got the um, we got the oil change here. I'm going to take you a walk up on the front of the sawmill. I want to show you something, and I'm going to see if everybody can guess what this is for. Uh, this sawmill had it had a past life before we bought it so when this sawmill was built back in 1985 it had other options on it so i don't know how the lighting is here but if you can guess what this big steel bracket is here and you can see there's bolt holes there there's more bolt holes there so it's forming a box there's more bolt holes there there's actually a bolt left from what, what it used to be there's a notch there. Can anybody guess what used to be on this sawmill? And I can still get one for the sawmill. And uh, see what you see what you think in the comments there. And I think you'll be surprised what what used to be on this mill. So, all right, I think our next step we're going to head back up to the shop, and I'm going to show you how I cut them. Uh, little pocket them keyhole pockets in the back of uh, Pete's frame I still haven't finished that I got the finished coat on it and it needs the uh, hanging pockets put in the keyholes and other than that uh, I just wanted to show you that because people had commented on that last video I'd made and how did you how are they going to hang this thing so I'll show you so let's head back to the workshop well we're back to the workshop and I got the picture frame all finished with the polyurethane and Alex is here. Hello, you what, what brings you over this way? Well, uh, we got a nice little project here. I'm redoing my basement, and I figure I'm going to make a nice little coat rack. And I wanted to get some, some nice wood from the sawmill, so it'll be a nice little video for you guys. Yeah, you have to show us the uh, finished product. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make that. If anybody's a firefighter, if you know what a pike pole is, it's at... Uh, Basically, we use the pool ceilings, and we're gonna we fabricated some metal. Me and my buddy, we're gonna make this uh, this coat rack out in the little little pike pool spaced out, and hang your coat on there. So it's gonna be a fireman theme kind of basement. I'm sure you guys will see it in other videos. Well, there you when go. It's all finished because we have another project, but I'm not gonna spoil it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it might be a really burning good time, huh? Yeah. All right, I'll let Alex hold the camera here, and we're gonna get we're gonna finish this up. I promised you I'd show you. Um, what we're going to do here this is the keyhole bit and basically it's got a round cutting head and then it has a thinner shank so when we jab that down into the board it's going to leave a slot 
a hole big enough to put a screw head in and then a slot big enough for the screw to slide back and forth to hang this on the wall. So we're going to go ahead, I already laid it out. We're going to make sure we're, we're on the top side of the frame. So I got, the, got this laid out on 16 inch centers. We're going to plunge in them holes and we're going to slide that way and it will work out perfect. So let me get these clamped down here. And I got cut short on time last time when I was filming this video and I couldn't, uh, couldn't get it done for you. In fact, I'm going to have to come out further with this. I can see a problem already. That fence will give us all kind of problems. So don't forget, May 4th, up in Corsica, Pennsylvania, we will all be up there having a good time supporting our brother Pete. And this will be one of the items. All right, get my safety glasses and we'll need some power. And always the safety thing is make sure that this is off when you plug your router in. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever plugged a router in when it was on, uh, it's kind of a startling event. All right, so we're going to do, we want to eye up. And depending on your router, I like them when they have the clear bases. We're going we're gonna to plunge it down in. We're going to slide it over until we hit the stop. We're going to come back, let the router shut off, and then we'll pull it back out. back and forth a couple of times just to get that sawdust out of there. Let it come to a complete stop. I cannot stress this enough. Because if you try to pull that out of there, do you still have them screws in your pocket? Okay, you got that screw real quick there, Alex. We'll show them how this actually works. I'm only going to show you how we do one of these. And you put that screw in the wall, you slide it in there, and now your picture's hung on the wall. So, real simple. And... That should wrap it up. So, hey, I'm glad you come along for the Friday E video. And uh, we have a lot of sawing come up. We're trying to secure some logs right now. Uh, we actually got Pete on the job for us. So uh, we're looking for some spruce. We got a bunch of uh, orders coming up and uh, got to do maintenance. This is that time of year. We're going to really be firing that mill up and running it. So get everything done now so we don't get shut down later on. So, hey, thanks again. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Mm,